Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. ...that you can uh, hear me. Uh, it's now four o'clock in London. Welcome to everyone who's joining us either from uh, London or nearby or from far away. Uh, I hope that you can all hear me uh, loud and clear. So uh, welcome to um, this webinar um, where I'm going to uh, outline a little bit what we're going to do in this customer management for executives open programs at Imperial College and uh, give you a bit of an introduction to the, the program, tell you who it's for, what you can expect from it, tell you a little bit about um, uh, myself as well and the content in particular and the structure and the and, and, and all the topics that we're going to touch on in, the, in this program. Uh, now a little bit uh, about uh, about myself. Um, I am an assistant professor in marketing at Imperial College Business School. I was previously at the University of Cambridge and uh, prior to that at the University of Melbourne in Australia. I'm originally from Switzerland, but I've spent a, a long time in Australia and uh, of course in the UK more recently. And um, my, my work as, a, as, a, as, a, as an academic, as a, as a marketing um, a researcher, I guess, is to ask important and relevant questions about uh, customers, about markets, about how do we link with the external environment of an organization, and to look at the kind of problems that organizations are having these days and to find answers that can help uh, increase their ability to create uh, returns to their investors uh, by creating uh, returns to customers, so customer value. And so the kind of things that I look, I look at in my research, for example, is you know what kind of role and influence should marketing have within organizations? There's a, there's a lot of talk, for example, about uh, a crisis of marketing in recent years, that marketing lacks influence, that marketing is not listened to. Uh, so what role should marketing have? What about marketing department? What about people who are not marketing people? What, what should they know about marketing? What kind of marketing should organizations implement if they want to achieve a competitive advantage? So this is the kind of research that I do, particularly within the context of services and relationship and marketing, but also more broadly in, the, in, in other industries. And I'm also interested in power politics in strategic marketing and of course digital marketing which is becoming more and more important for uh, all sorts of organizations now my um, my, my work um, I think it's important to, to, to say in, in my work I'm really keen to uh, I leave the office as much as I can if you want because uh, uh, if I want my research to be relevant I need to be in touch in contact with what what uh, marketing practitioners in the real world and companies in the real world are actually doing so one of the things that I'm really keen to do as regularly as possible is to work with real organizations with real clients with companies out there that have the kind of problems that I study and then this allows me to do two things one is to understand problems in the real world so that I can go back to the office and try to solve them through my research. But secondly, what it also allows me to do, this consulting work and, 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 and corporate education, it allows me to also disseminate the, uh, the outcome of my work. So to actually see the ideas that I develop in my, in my research and, and my teaching within the university, to see how they actually can impact uh, practitioners, so to, to, to actually see them uh, being deployed. And, uh, and so I've, I've, I've shared with you some of my recent clients, companies that I've, that I've done, that I've worked with um, recently. So that's a little bit about myself. Uh, in terms of what the program is about, so what is this program about uh, uh, in, in terms of the, the key, the key um, uh, elements of it? Well, the, I guess the, the, the main point here is that we really need to appreciate the importance of get, identifying, growing and retaining customers in terms of how it affects the profitability of businesses. One of the key things that we look at in this program is the idea that there cannot be financial value creation without customer value creation. And um, 
it, it, that might make perfect sense, but there's so many strategies, there's so many organizations out there that rely on strategies that create financial returns potentially in the short term for the business without necessarily doing so by creating customer value. Think of strategies that lock customers in, that make customers, that, 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 that prevent customers from leaving or contract with terms and conditions that customers don't necessarily want or need. All of these strategies are really designed to create customer captivity, not customer loyalty. And we're going to look in this program really about how do we actually foster customer retention? Why is it important to do so? And what are some strategies um, that we can implement immediately to improve our ability to manage customer acquisition, to manage customer retention, and to do so with really uh, the, the objective of creating maximum uh, 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 enduring performance within the organization. So these are these are some of the key ideas that we're going to look at in, in, in the program. And the, our approach will be very much driven by best practices. So we are looking at what are market leaders out there doing? What can we learn from them? What can we look, what can we find out from a variety of different industries, a variety of different organizations, learn from them and then apply them to your business. And so we're going to look at some of the latest ideas, some of the most innovative approaches, some of which will emerge from research that has been done in business and some of which comes from uh, the, the more practical uh, applications of business. So this is what the program is about. Out. In terms of the the objectives, I guess again, one of the things that uh, it's very important to do when we're talking about marketing is to elevate marketing from something that is just functional. So thinking of marketing as something that marketing people within a marketing department do, to truly understand how we can, uh, in a sense, dilute marketing activities throughout the organisation to really. Uh, establish marketing not just as a function but as a culture. So that is the starting point. So the, quite, the question really that we want to answer is what does a customer focus really entail? How do we implement it? There's a lot of things that we, we say in marketing and strategy in general that often uh, make sense theoretically or conceptually. For example, consider the idea of customer focus, or customer centrism, market orientation, all these concepts that are very similar. We talk about these things, but what, what does it actually mean? Does it mean that the customer is always right? Does it mean that uh, we, we, we need to give the customers always what they want? Uh, what, what does it mean in practice? But in particular, how do we deploy it? How do we design a business that is truly customer centric? And that is a harder question to answer because that means what are some of the things that you can take away from this program that you can immediately do the day after to actually improve the customer centric uh, uh, orientation of your business? And that is really one of the key objectives here. We're going to look at the ideas, yes, the theory, yes, and all of that, but we're particularly going to ask, what does it mean for you? What this means is that we uh, are going to uh, look at things in, in, in terms of, you know, in, in a lecture setting, so we're going to discuss these, uh, these ideas together in groups, but also one of the things that we have built inside this program is a lot of workshops, it's a lot of little exercises, it's a lot of little, small opportunities for you to reflect on the ideas that we have just discussed and then apply them to your business and derive some, uh, uh, some, some implications in terms of the execution of these ideas and then test them within the group with, uh, with, with everyone within the, um, uh, within the program. So we're going to look at this from a best practices point of view and we're going to look at some fundamental ideas, some things that have been around for a while, but in particular, some novel ideas. I think one of the key things in this program, one of the key objectives, really what we're trying to do is to, um, to, to, ref to, to, to create an element of freshness about the ideas uh, that you might walk out with, to give you some new things to think about, to challenge you a little bit, to think outside the box or to think about novel things, to inspire you, to inspire you about no novel ways, about interesting and effective ways in which you, create, you can create customer uh, value and financial value. So it's really about energizing you to find new ways to compete. Uh, and therefore, you know, we need to ask, who is this program for? Well, I think fundamentally it's for anyone who has the ability 
to initiate change within your your company or within your your functional unit but it, it, it's about really um, empowering people who have uh, a desire for ideas that are novel and effective and they can also execute them or help execute them so so for that reason it can also extend to any executives, any entrepreneurs that are wishing to broaden uh, the strategic thinking, uh, any anybody who really is keen to to find out what are some novel, interesting, powerful, effective ways in which I can I can build customer value and improve profitability that I can help deploy uh, within within the company. So these are primarily the um, the people who come to uh, the, the, this program. Uh, now, this is, um, I thought I'd share with you a program outline. This is subject to change a little bit, but this, this gives you an idea of how, uh, how we cover the, the material. And, um, and of course, I'm, I'm just going to, to go through it briefly, but please be reminded that, that at the end of this, uh, this presentation, you're more than welcome to, to ask any questions. I can expand on any of the things that, that, that I've covered or, 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 uh, or answer any of the questions that you might have. So we can, we can do that at the end. You can type into the, the webinar uh, window and ask your question. Uh, so usually we, we start in the morning by really introducing this idea of high performance customer management. So what does it mean to, 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 to implement marketing uh, for high performance? This requires elevating marketing from something tactical. So not looking at marketing just as marketing communications or uh, advertising or pricing or channels management or things like that. But it really entails looking at marketing as something broader and in particular something more strategic so we're going to look at really this idea of value driven marketing that involves looking at marketing as a strategic force within the business so your marketing becomes something that is elevated to something uh, broader than just te a tactical toolkit say like the four p's or something like that so we're going to look beyond that and uh, we're going to look at how do we build a customer centric business. So this really entails looking at marketing as a culture. We're going to introduce the concept of market customer orientation and we're going to look at the kind of activities that you can execute within the business to improve your ability to be customer centric. So for example, we're going to look at how you generate intelligence from the market. How do you create customer insights? How, what does it mean to be customer centric in terms of generating uh, information about customers and, 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 and maximizing the, 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 the usefulness and relevance of customer input? Then we're going to look at how do we disseminate, disseminate that intelligence? How do we make sure that all this beautiful information that we can generate from customers or these insights, etc., actually end up in the hands of those that are best positioned to, to, to make decisions in the interest of customers and the organization. So it's about really intelligence dissemination. We're going to talk about then how once we have that intelligence, how do we actually respond to it? So how do we develop strategies designed to respond as effectively, as quickly as possible to the customer insights? So this is all part of building a customer-centric business. And again, we look at these issues in, the, in, the, in terms of how they are uh, um, executed. So we look very, very much into, with, with a level of granularity about what does it mean for you when you go back to work and, 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 and would like to implement these things. So we're going to introduce the economics of customer acquisition and retention. And what that means basically is that we're just going to provide um, a business case for customer acquisition and retention. So, so why should we care? Why should we bother about these things? And once you know where the um, really the, 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 the power of uh, customer retention comes from so the the, the, the uh, economic uh, and financial benefits of it then we're able to pinpoint certain things that we can do to maximize the value that we uh, extract out of uh, customer retention initiatives so that is looking i guess at marketing as as, as a culture um, but we're also going to look at marketing as i said as a strategy and relationship management so we're going to very much look at issues for example uh, of customer relevancy how do we build a strategy that is actually or, or, or a value proposition that is actually relevant to your customers uh, how do we uh, use certain models we're going to look for example at the customer value model we're going to look at the strategy curve model so there's lots of different tools and frameworks which in the in the past uh, uh, people who have attended this program have also loved and they told me after 
afterwards, how much they use them uh, um, when they go back to work and how they share them with others. And all of these tools are designed to get you to think about these ideas and implement them. Um, so we're going to look at service quality and customer loyalty in the, in, in the afternoon. And, and, and again, it's key drivers of customer retentions. So how, uh, in a sense, we're going to have to ask questions such as why custom, why do customers leave, uh, and and how can we retain them? And we're, and we're going to really try to understand it by by looking at this at fundamental customer behavior issues. What can we learn from the way in which customers behave uh, that will allow us to retain them and to create a relationship that, as I said earlier, it's not based on customer captivity, but it's based on attitudinal attachment. How do you get your customers to love what you do and, uh, and, 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 to, and to create a bond uh, that makes that relationship as, as sticky as possible? So we're going to look at that. Uh, we're going to look at things like service failure recovery, for example, but also how do we manage customer satisfaction? And we're going to look at some metrics in terms of how to best to measure customer satisfaction, how to measure your ability to create uh, customer satisfaction. We're going to look at customer satisfaction uh, as a metric, but in particular, we're going to go beyond that as well, look at things like the net promoter score, participation scores, engagement scores. So all these are uh, these ways of uh, assessing uh, uh, whether you, the, the, the relationship that you're building with your customers is solid, is strong, is enduring. Uh, we're going to also talk about and some novel ideas here, particularly when it comes to uh, digital marketing, because what digital marketing is very much doing is uh, is providing us with a lot of tools, a lot of ways to engage with customers. Now, the problem, of course, is that when you have all of these tools available to link with customers, um, it doesn't necessarily mean you should use all of them, because it's very easy to cross the line between, you know, in engaging your customers and stalking them. So we also have to be realistic about what is the best, most effective way to make this stuff happen through the channels that are available. So this is primarily what we're going to look at in day two as well, when we look at implementing the strategy. And we're going to look at customer psychology in terms of um, understanding the, 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 the your customer traits and how they behave and why they behave in a certain way, so that then you can develop strategies and tactics that are relevant, they're meaningful, that really show to your customers that you care and that and that and, and that understanding that that fundamental uh, element of trust is key to building any relationship. So we're going to look at these issues of how do we manage transaction barriers to 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 create customer value and um, issues in marketing communications, connecting with customers, and also, of course, what does it all mean in terms of innovation, new product and service development? What should you be thinking about when you're thinking of managing uh, managing your, your your market for the future? So, in, in, in summary, what we what, what we're really looking at is marketing from a perspective that from from four different perspectives we're looking at marketing as culture so as i mentioned this idea of market orientation how can we develop it how can we nurture it marketing a strategy you know this idea that we want to elevate marketing to a strategic level level so it's not just tacticals but but it's, it's about really instilling customer insights and marketing uh in a way within your company that drives your business strategy that feeds into your business strategy this entails understanding what determines customer value and how can we go about creating it in the best most effective way and then communicate it and deliver it also, what, what, what I just mentioned entails looking at marketing as relationships. So elevate marketing management from something transactional. You know, we will discuss the, the, the key difference between marketing and sales and how marketing and sales best get to work. And, and, and this entails looking at marketing uh, in, in a more relationship as opposed to transactional oriented perspective. Uh, so how do we break through really the, the clutter? How do we stand out? How do we attract and retain loyal and profitable customers by elevating marketing from something transactional to something uh, relational? And finally, as I said, we finish with marketing as tactics, um, looking at how all of these things are implemented through the most effective, the most innovative tools. Uh, uh, and and, and I, again, to remind you, we are looking at established ideas, so we're looking at some fundamental concepts, but also also, we're focusing on the really novel ideas out there, and, uh, and, and this is driven very much by the kind of work uh, that we do, of course, at Imperial College Business School, which I guess leads me 
to ask him the the question you know why in what way is this program uh, unique what, what what do we do that you, you, you can't get elsewhere well importantly you you will be located within imperial college business school uh, we, we draw on the resources of, uh, of a college that um, is, uh, is, is a very strong research institution with very strong intellectual assets and networks, particularly driven by uh, its work in innovation, in technology, et cetera. So we bring all of that in and we provide something that is based on both research. So a lot of this stuff that you're going to hear about is based on the work that we do within Imperial College, that, um, that, that myself has done, that my colleagues have done over the years. So it's rigorous research, research driven. The, the, you know, what you will not get in, in this program is a person uh, telling you everything they know about their own experience. You know, uh, when, you, when you're going to, uh, when, when you're trained by, um, uh, in, in a way that is not research driven, often you hear a lot about a sample size of one, you know, the experience of a person that might or might not apply to you. We are based on research that looks at hundreds of organizations, it looks at, at a large number uh, of, of data that is based on the analysis of that data and gives you something that uh, really is insightful, in particular, you know, empirically, empirically uh, solid. So we, the research that we do, I, I think, is very important in, in how it, it, it informs our, our teaching. And, uh, and, 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 and of course, it's not just uh, theory, it's not just concepts, but it's managerially relevant. So I think that's the, the, one of the USPs that we have in, in, in our program is that it's really at the intersection of rigorous scientific research and managerial relevance and, and, and managerial practice. Uh, and that is, I think, what fundamentally what makes this program particularly uh, interesting, particularly strong, and hopefully will, uh, will lead to a lot of fresh and interesting and solid and innovative ideas that you can go, that you can leave with and, and implement within your business. Uh, of, of course, we have access to Imperial College faculty. We look at marketing from a holistic point of view. Again, it's not just uh, uh, you know technical, it's not just about digital marketing, it's not just about uh, say, communications you know but as I said it's about looking at marketing in, in, in a very broad way uh, that, that can make it meaningful to anyone we focus on the big and the small so this is relevant whether your business is, 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 is an early stage company or a startup or whether your business is a, is a large established organization uh, and also the new and the old as I said it, it's about um, really looking at new ideas but, but also some fundamental ones that retain their uh, importance and relevance. Um, the teaching is very interactive. We have plenty of workshops, as I mentioned earlier. We apply concepts uh, in, in these exercise discussions. What, what, what I've also noticed in the past is that there is a lot of learning that happens from each other in the room. And uh, so it's an opportunity to build uh, a relationship with the business school, with the faculty of the business school, but also with um, like-minded people from a variety of different countries and companies and industries and, um, and learn from each other. So it's quite collaborative um, uh, um, and, and, and interactive. And, and, the, and the class is always fun. It's always um, quite engaging. Um, it's a, I think it's a fantastic environment in which to learn um, something very interesting and useful. Uh, but um, don't take my word for it. I, um, what I've done here, I've uh, uh, shared with you some of the feedback from uh, uh, from previous delegates that have attended this program because I, I, I think that this is the most transparent and, and best way to share with you um, what people have taken away from this and how they they responded to it. So I, I'll, I'll leave you. Uh, I'm not going to read those out to you, but you can you can take a quick look and um, and of course. Uh, please be advised that these slides will also be made available on the um, on the website, so you can download them for your future reference. And or or, or if you have a, uh, anything that you have seen that you want to ask more about uh, that um, that wasn't clear, etc., you can of course get in touch with me and at any point and uh, and ask me any questions. You're free to ask questions, of course. Now now I've I've reached the end of um, this presentation now and. Um, and I might just share with you my email address um, in a second after I've given you a few more uh, seconds to read that because I obviously it's a lot of reading there to do.
So this is my email. If you have any questions, uh, well, you want um, to find out more about the program or have anything that wasn't clear, please get in touch directly with me and I'll be more than happy to, um, to, 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 to answer your questions. Uh, you may also, of course, um, type any questions now in the webinar window and I'll ask them. But otherwise, uh, I uh, thank you so much for joining us today um, for this short for this short introduction. I don't see any 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 questions being typed here. Let me just have a look. Um, no. Okay, I, w I, w I will remain online uh, here. Yeah, for uh, for a few minutes. So, if you have any questions uh, that you want to type in the uh, in the window, please feel free to do so. Um, I'll remain online. Uh, otherwise, again, as my email, please do get in touch. Thank you again. We do really hope to see as many of you in the in the program as possible. Uh, it's always a lot of fun. Uh, it's always a, a great experience for for the people who come, and it's something that uh, we hope you will never uh, you will never forget. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good day. Bye bye.